Hi, I'm Arthur F. Carmazzi, and welcome to Asia's Most Asked Leadership Questions. Today's question is, how do you develop and sustain leadership at all levels of an organization? Well, the answer to that, first, you must have two keys. Let's see what they are. The first key is let others fail. Now, if you're into control, if you're into making sure that everything's perfect, it's not going to happen. And therefore, you will not develop leaders in others. So you must let them fail. And the thing is that, see, we as human beings, we learn through our failures. We learn through the things that we do and try. And, you know, as human beings, we actually do have an ability that others just sometimes don't see. And sometimes we don't even get a chance to show that ability. If you're watching this, chances are that has happened to you. There has been a time when you know you can do something and you just don't get the chance to do it. And there are other times when you think you can and it doesn't quite work out, but you learn from it. And that is who we are as human beings. We are developing constantly to become better. But unless we are allowed to fail, unless we are allowed to take that risk, unless we are allowed to try to implement our own ideas, our own methods, we will never be able to instill that in others. And we ourselves will not be great leaders. So in order to let others fail intelligently, clarify the constraints. Okay, time, budget, manpower, what do they have to work with? Okay, and don't, don't, don't spoof feed them. These people, you know, will get lazy if, you go, if you're going to start spoon feeding people. If they know that you have the answers, they're just going to go for you for the answers. If they actually need to make a decision by themselves, they'll never do it. Why? Oh my gosh, boss isn't here. What am I going to do? Okay, don't spoon feed them. Let them come up with the ideas. Ask them questions. Don't give them the answers directly. It will not help them to develop and it will not help them to become better leaders. Okay? And show respect for their methods. Who are they? They're, they some people process information differently. They have different emotional drives. They have different ways of perceiving things. Let them try it their way. Okay? Don't judge. Let them try. Be respectful of their methods. Now, if they do fail, at least help them to identify what that failure meant. Okay? Because the failure itself essentially is a stepping stone to a greater success. And make sure that they know that. Make sure that when they do fail, that it's not a bad thing. Make sure that that failure is reframed into a perspective of a stepping stone to success. That means one failure means that they are now closer to a greater success, to being better people, to being better leaders, to being more efe efficient, more effective. Each failure can help them to be better. So essentially, each failure can be a success. Let them believe that, let them know that. You as a leader develop that mentality, that attitude of accepting failure as a positive thing and not a negative thing. As long as you learn from it. As long as you learn from it. So in order to fail intelligently, make sure that they know they are allowed to make mistakes so that they will take more responsibility. Okay? And when they do learn from their mistakes, okay, make sure that they know that that is designed in order to help them to be better in the future. And be supportive in their failing and be supportive in their failures. Develop their confidence by showing them where that failure has a positive impact. So why are these two keys important? Trust. In order to develop leadership at all levels of an organization, you must instill trust. And, and trust isn't going to happen if you say, oh, okay, it's all right for you to fail. And then the moment they do, wham, you grab these guys and you, you tell them how stupid they are and all this stuff that uh, they did wrong and how much it cost the company and da 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 
trust comes from allowing people to make mistakes that will help them to be better. Now, this doesn't mean let them slack off. It means allow them to take responsibility, take risks, and be better equipped to handle failures in the future. If you develop this trust, you will also develop their respect. If you develop the respect, you will cultivate success. Why? Because everybody wants to be successful. Every single one of us. We desire to be successful. We desire to be trusted. We desire to be respected. When you develop a sense of trust, people will want to earn that trust. When you develop a sense of respect, when you respect people, people will live up to those expectations of that respect. With the proper guidance that you give, the attitude of trust, the attitude of respect, the ability to feel successful will develop a strong leadership ability in others. So if you want to create leadership at all levels of your organization, create the desire for each individual to want to become, to feel that they can become a great leader. And that happens with trust. Because when people feel that you trust them, they will want to earn that trust. When people feel that you respect them, they will live up to the expectations of that respect. If you guide people to fail successfully, the emotions behind the feeling of success as an individual, as a leader, will not only help the people themselves to feel successful, but it will change the attitudes and the perceptions of everybody in that organization. Start failing successfully today. This concludes today's question and answer session. So stay tuned for the next video where we will ask, as a leader, what keeps you up at night? This is Arthur F. Karmazi wishing you extraordinary leadership success.